How's it going, folks? So we have Bell's Brewery over here in this corner and Innovation Brewery in this corner. What the heck am I talking about? Well, over the past seven days or so in the media, blogs, newspapers, magazines, internet everywhere, most folks in the business, in the field now know that Bell's Brewing Company has issued a request to Innovation Brewing Company to halt their uh, re their federal trademark request on their brewery name, Innovation. Reason for this, uh, according to Bell's, and I did reach out to both Bell's and Innovation, and both sides pretty much referred me to the respective legal teams. Um, Innovation's legal team has not yet gotten back to me, and I'm not going to pretend to play attorney, so I'm going to defer to the Bell's legal team, which did actually get back to me, and I will reserve my opinions on the Innovation side until hopefully their team gets back to me, and I know that they're very busy, so, you know, I'm not exactly uh, expecting them to phone me anytime soon. They've got other stuff that they're doing that's uh, very, very important, so I am hoping to hear from them soon. But anyway, on the Bell side of it, according to them, this basically comes down to common law trademark versus federal trademark, and common law trademark basically means that when you publish something in any spectrum that is used for selling your business and your product to the public, you then own that trademark. And again, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to get into the very specific legalese of this. But basically what that means is, oh, let's see. If you were to publish a short story on some blog somewhere, you and it's totally your original idea, you unofficially own that product, and you can then defend it as your personal trademark and your personal stuff. Um, pretty much uh, the vast majority of people that uh, make videos or anything like that on YouTube, for example, um, a lot of them operate under common law trademarks, uh, if they're just random videos. Uh, for someone who maybe has a specific channel, a lot of electric ch uh, uh, electronics channels and things like that have actual trademarks and copyrights. So that's kind of the difference between a common law and a federal trademark or a state trademark. Um, and the reason why this has become an issue in this case is the slogan for the Bell's Brewing Company is Brewing Innovation Since 1985. So you can see where they might have an issue with Innovation Brewing Company. Um, and essentially, uh, all Bell's, uh, according to their legal team, uh, wanted Innovation to do was to simply withdraw the federal trademark request for their brewery name. That's all. They did not, they do not, and have not asked them to stop brewery operations. They have not asked them for money, monetary settlement, um, at least so far as they told me. If they have, they didn't mention it to me, but so far as I know, they have not asked for that. Um, and if I'm wrong, they just did not mention it to me. So my apologies there if I get that part wrong. Um, but again, they did not ask them to shut the brewery down. They did not ask them for compensation of any kind. They apparently have simply asked them to just withdraw the federal trademark request because in common law, you own the you theoretically own the rights to the product and the merchandise that uses that product's name or slogan or whatever it is. So any bumper stickers or whatever that Bells has been selling with that slogan on it, including all of their bottle art, is owned by them, theoretically, is basically what common law is. Um, a federally recognized trademark means that once that trademark is in place, it's across all 50 states, including, you know, including Alaska and Hawaii, and any states that the U.S. occupies, including Puerto Rico and others. That's recognized everywhere, and if someone else were to try and do something in any relation to that trademark, you have the right to actually sue them for trademark infringement and get them to cease and desist all operations thereof. Of course, Bells would have an issue with this, and that's where we stand now. And again, all Bells has wanted them to do is just rescind the trademark uh, request. And according to their side of it, Innovation has said, no, we are not going to do that. Again, I have not heard from Innovation, so as of this moment, I cannot begin to uh, tell you their side of this story. So to the folks at Innovation, if you're watching, again, just waiting to hear from your legal team. I'm not taking sides on this either way. I mentioned that when I gave you guys a call when I emailed you. This is just stating both sides of the issue. Uh, for those folks watching this video that are just, you know, observers, it comes down to your opinions on common law trademark versus federal trademark, which one you actually want to recognize yourselves individually. Um, I don't really have a dog in this fight either way. I hope that Bells and Innovation are able to settle this 
in a respectable manner. They're all adults. So for the folks out there who have been saying, oh, I will never buy Bell's beer again, they're bullies or anything like that. And, you know, I think that's a little nuts. I understand wanting to defend your own and to defend a smaller fish in the community. Um, one thing that Bell's uh, folks told me is that this is kind of a, a definitely more prominent happening in the craft beer industry right now because there are just so many breweries that are popping up all over the place. Eventually, you're going to run into idea A and idea B that are very similar to one another. And unfortunately, because of that, you get into these legal matters. Um, a couple of instances in the state of Virginia alone, uh, very well documented that uh, Blue Mountain Brewery in Nelson County had an issue with Dogfish Head Brewery out of Delaware, where Dogfish Head had an issue with the local species beer packaging uh, for the local species uh, uh, beer that Blue Mountain makes because the design is was eerily similar, almost a carbon copy of the Dogfish Head Brewery's brewery logo. So they got together and through one thing led to another, Blue Mountain decided, yeah, what the heck, we'll change the logo design on the bottle, and it actually looks even better now than it did. I think Blue Mountain actually came out ahead on that one. Um, the irony. But anyway, um, Apocalypse Ale Works in Forest, Virginia had a trademark dispute uh, for the name of one of their beers with a brewery on the West Coast, which they have asked me not to name, and that's fine. Um, but suffice to say, the issue was they, that brewery already had something called a Apocalypse Imperial Red Ale, and I'm not even kidding. The solution to this issue was fl flip-flopping two words to making it Red Apocalypse Imperial Ale. That was it. I'm not even kidding. That was the solution to this problem. And this happens all the time. So uh, when usually, and this is what I've been able to gather, I've called around uh, all over the country uh, recently asking these questions. Normally when breweries have issues like this, they get together and they just settle it like, you know, like fo like people normally do in this industry. They have a beer and they talk. This is one of the instances where it has gone into legal matters and, of course, you know, you've got lawyer team A and lawyer team B talking to get to, talking with each other and talking with the uh, uh, owners of the respective breweries and seeing if there's anything that can actually be worked out amicably before taking it to the next level. And apparently, we may be getting to the next level soon, from what I've read. Uh, could not get Bell's team to comment on that and, and you know, it's a legal matter that they're still going through, so they're not going to discuss an ongoing uh, legal matter in that respect. They purely got back to me with regards to what the official terminology of this is. And again, common law versus federal uh, trademark. And um, I have seen a lot of very harsh, and I mean almost death threat-like um, blogs and comments and stuff just saying that Bells is the worst thing since in the world has begun. I think that's taking it a little bit too far. If you owned a business and you thought that there was an issue with someone taking an idea of yours, you would probably feel the same way as Bell's. You'd want to defend your idea um, in some way, shape, or form. And you ha and everyone, Bell's has all the right to do this. They have all the right to ask them to rescind and they have all the right to enter legal proceedings in this matter. Um, again, I'm not an attorney, but I have looked it up. They have all the right to pursue this. Um, has it been pursued? Maybe not in the Best way, some could argue, sure. Has it been pursued in the way that they saw fit and that they're legally uh, allowed to do? Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, bars in North Carolina are, have said they won't carry Bell's products anymore. You know, that I... Uh, do I disagree with that idea? Yeah, but do I understand it? Absolutely. They're defending one of their own, and, and they're making sure that innovation knows that they have their support. And innovation has actually gotten a lot of press about this. Um... Um, I, again, I haven't really heard much back from them, but one thing that I can gather is that they've never had more exposure ever. So, uh, when I made the original phone call to Innovation, I heard, you know, I called their main uh, line to the brewery tap room. I heard so much in the background, it was ridiculous. So, they are clearly very well loved and, and respected in that community. And I can only imagine this is going to get them a lot more business in general. Um, sure, people may have a bad taste in their mouth about Bells at this moment, but... A lot more of this stuff is going to come to light, hopefully very soon, about what actually is going on, and hopefully there's an amicable uh, resolution for all of this. Uh, you know, I like Bell's beer. I have not had a chance to try innovations, but I would love to make a trip down to North Carolina and try some of it. 
Um, the owners uh, appear to be great people. I've read a bunch of stuff out of North Carolina. These people are just the best uh, group of folks you can imagine being in contact with. Um, the atmosphere is apparently really great down there. Um, so I encourage folks that have never been there to a place, in a place called Sylvia, North Carolina, to take a trip down there and see it. Uh, I'm in Richmond, Virginia now, so it's a bit of a trip for me. But, you know, who knows? Uh, when I have a chance to make a day trip and I got some friends with me, why not? I'd love to go. Um, as far as Bells, well, it's in Michigan. It's a bit far away, so hopefully I'll get there too. But I, I assume I'd be a fan of both. Um, this is just one of those things that happens um, in any industry, whether it be beer, whether it be sports, whether it be technology, whether it be anything. There's so much. There's so many ideas out there that eventually one of them is going to have a conflict, and that's where we are. Um, so let me know uh, what you think about common law versus federal trademark recognition, where you stand on the issues. Keep it civil. Uh, we're not trying to bring any other topics into this other than the topic at hand, which is bells versus innovation. And if you have a um, uh, example of a similar uh, brewery or winery or even distilled spirits trademark dispute, let me know. Shoot me a link to the information, and I'd love to read it and take a look. Um, thanks for watching, folks, and uh, talk to you all soon. Cheers. Can you